One of the biggest obstacles for me when I was first getting into backpacking was the fear of going alone. I really wanted buddies to take along, not only to feel more comfortable in the woods, but also to share these incredible experiences with. The catch-22 is that it can be hard to meet other backpackers until you start backpacking. So how do you get over that initial hurdle when you want to go backpacking but don't have anyone to go with and you're kind of terrified of going alone? In this video, I'm going to share plenty of tips I've picked up over the years, including safety precautions, my favorite safety gear, and ideas for simply getting more comfortable while solo backpacking. But first, and potentially most importantly, I just want to say that if you wait until someone is willing to go with you, you might be waiting for the rest of your life. My best advice for anyone who wants to backpack but has no one to go with might be a little controversial, but I honestly don't care. And that advice is that you should go alone. Making friends who backpack will come with the territory and it's also just incredibly empowering. It's okay if you're scared, that's perfectly normal, but I think it's also a good sign that you're maybe pushing a little bit out of your comfort zone. I still get scared when I go solo backpacking sometimes, but as a woman, I'm so sick of the narrative that it's too scary or that we shouldn't go into the backcountry alone when realistically it's way safer than most of our daily commutes. Over time, I've learned a few things and developed a few strategies that have made solo backpacking as a woman not only safer, but also just more comfortable and slightly less scary. And in this video, I'd like to share them with anyone of any gender who might find them helpful for going on their first solo backpacking adventure. Obviously, there are some skills you'll need to read up on and develop in regards to backpacking in general, but in this video, I want to focus specifically on tips for solo backpacking adventures. If you stick around to the end, you'll get some of my favorite tips and tricks to help you sleep while solo. First of all, I want to talk about my favorite tips for staying safe, aka safety precautions. And that brings me to my first point. Before your first solo trip, you'll want to make sure you have all the gear you need and know how to use it. Because you'll be solo, you won't be able to rely on other people for backup if you forget or break something. Gear can obviously vary a little bit by region, but I'll link some of my gear lists in the description as a rough starting point. If you've never used your gear before, try setting everything up in the backyard before you go. Practice cooking on your stove, practice filtering your water. This I think helps with some of the nerves that come from using your gear for the first time and also will mean that you already know what to do when you're in a more critical situation aka out in the backcountry. With that out of the way, my second tip is to make a lot of noise. A lot of people I talk to are most afraid of wild animals when it comes to solo backpacking, and the best way to prevent any sort of run-in is to make noise while you're hiking. When I'm hiking alone at dusk especially, and I know I'm on a secluded trail, sometimes I'll play music out loud, not something I would typically do on like a more popular trail during the day, but if I know I'm pretty much alone out there, I'll play music out loud on my phone, I'll sing out loud, I'll bang my trekking poles together. All of these are great ways to kind of let the animals know that you're there and most likely then you won't even see them. My next tip is also really relevant if animals are the thing that scares you about going solo backpacking, and that is to learn about the ones that you're afraid of. The more you learn about them, the less afraid you'll likely be, and the more you can do to prevent any sort of bad encounters. Most wild animals are more afraid of us than we are of them, and if we follow the proper precautions, bad run-ins are extremely, extremely unlikely. For instance, I backpack in areas with bears quite often, so I'm extra careful about following food storage protocols and to make a lot of noise when I'm walking alone. Hey bear! Hey bear! Especially at dawn or dusk. Next is to share your plans with someone you trust. If you're solo backpacking, always let someone know where you're going, your planned itinerary, and when they should expect you to return. It's important to keep in mind that your trip might include some unforeseen variables, so make sure they don't panic if you're like an hour or two late getting into cell service, but it's smart to have an agreed upon time that they should get concerned if you haven't returned. On the flip side of that tip is not sharing your plans with people you don't trust aka not posting any plans on the internet publicly and maybe even not sharing photos of where you're at while you're there. For me personally, I like to not share anything until I'm safely back home. My next tip is to make conservative decisions and also trust your instincts. You may be a badass hiker who can scale a class three climb practically in your sleep, but consider making more conservative decisions while backpacking solo. This could include everything from taking a more chill route to setting up your tent earlier than you usually would if it starts to rain. Um, making more conservative decisions on your first solo trip ensures that you'll have 
many more in your future. And also it's okay to follow your gut and turn around if the trip doesn't feel right or if someone doesn't feel right. You got out there to begin with and that's what matters. There's no shame in turning around if something is off. And that brings me to my next point, which is lie to strangers and don't worry about hurting their feelings. I'm a firm believer that people are far scarier walking down any given city street than most trails, but that doesn't mean we have to blindly trust everyone in the backcountry. I've had strangers usually innocently ask where I'm camping, how many miles I'm planning for that day, etc. And usually I don't mind telling people and they're just making conversation. But if you feel at all uncomfortable, remember that it's okay to just flat out lie in these situations. A few particular instances come to mind when people have asked if I'm out here all alone or my personal pet peeve, where's your boyfriend? And sometimes I don't feel comfortable sharing that information, so I tell them that my group is up ahead or that my boyfriend's behind me. They don't need to know that I'm out there alone, especially if they're asking that question specifically. My next tip is to make a campsite and route choices. Again, when it comes to creepy dudes and dangerous people, I truly believe that going to the grocery store in your hometown is probably more dangerous than going backpacking. Preying on people is already a lot of work, so why make it harder by walking 20 miles in the backcountry to do so? At least that's what I tell myself when I need a little bit more peace of mind. That said, proximity to people is something I like to keep in mind in two different respects when solo backpacking. First is the positives of being close to other people. Sometimes it can be a good thing to be surrounded by other people. And if that is something that will make you feel more comfortable while solo backpacking, then consider going to areas that are a little bit more popular like Alpine lakes or something of that nature. It's obviously not a guarantee, but if it's peak season on a nice summer weekend at a fairly popular destination, you can likely avoid complete solitude if that's something that will make you more comfortable going solo. On the flip side of that is the negatives of being close to people while solo backpacking. Depending on the context, being around people while backpacking can be scarier and feel more dangerous. For me, times that come to mind are camping too close to roads or trailheads that get a lot of car traffic. Personally, this makes me a little uneasy and I try to camp as far away from places with car access as possible. Essentially, avoid camping alone in places where people will see you camping alone. So those are some of my favorite safety precautions that I take before solo backpacking. And with all of that out of the way, I wanna move on to some of my favorite safety gear for solo backpacking. First is bear spray or pepper spray or pepper gel. If you're gonna be packpacking in an area with bears, I like to say that your bear spray becomes sort of a multi-purpose item. You can use it not only as protection against bears, but also against humans. While I have never had to pepper or bear spray anybody in my 5,000 plus miles of backpacking, I know that carrying something for protection can bring a lot of peace of mind. If you don't need bear spray or don't wanna carry it, Try pepper spray or gel attached to the strap of your backpack so it's easily accessible. I've heard that gel can be great so that you don't accidentally spray yourself if you happen to be downwind. Another really useful safety item to have is an emergency whistle. Just for reference, that means it's at least 100 decibels loud. This can be great if you want to make some extra noise while walking down the trail. Maybe don't give it a full blow, but maybe some light puffs. If you need to alert someone of your presence or if you need to call for help, the international distress signal is three blasts and some backpacks even have a whistle built into the chest strap buckle. So check if yours does, just give it a quick blow. Um, but if not, you can always attach one pretty easily to your chest strap or somewhere on your backpack straps or keep it in your fanny pack or something. Another great safety tool of modern times is a satellite communicator. These should be used as a last resort, not as a fail safe, and they do have limitations. The most important feature that many satellite communicators include is an SOS button. SOS buttons are used for calling for help in an emergency, but it's important to remember that your SOS device is no good to you if you can't access it or you're unable to use it for some other reason like you're unconscious. So keep it on you at all times in an easily accessible place, but never go into a situation where you expect you might have to use it. Make sense? Some devices even allow you to send check-ins with your location, which I find is a good feature for giving my loved ones peace of mind, but it's also important to be clear with your loved ones about its limitations. 
If you're backpacking in a canyon, for instance, it can sometimes be hard for devices to communicate with the satellites and sometimes messages get really delayed. I once sent a message to my dad and the GPS was having trouble properly acquiring my location and it reported me as being somewhere in Chad, Africa when I was backpacking in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California. Luckily, my dad knew not to panic and he didn't end up alerting authorities that I'd somehow been kidnapped out of the backcountry and transported halfway across the world. But instances like that are important to keep in mind and important to communicate with the people who might start to expect check-ins from you next is extra battery when i'm solo backpacking i like to pack a very conservative amount of extra battery this gives me peace of mind that i'll have plenty of headlamp and phone battery this is especially important if you're using your phone for navigational purposes that said electronics can break get dropped in the water extra batteries can run out especially if it's really cold so it's always a good idea to have a map and compass and know how to use them just in case. Now that we've covered quite a few practical safety tips for solo backpacking adventures, I'd like to touch on some things that make it just plain comfortable and less scary. Despite having all the gear and skills you need for a solo trip, it can still be hard to get over that mental hurdle of being in the woods alone. And I wanna share some of the things that have worked for me and for some of my solo backpacking friends during our various solo trips. These tips sort of fall into two different categories, setting yourself up for sleep success and just setting yourself up for success in general. I think sleep can be one of the biggest hurdles when solo backpacking because being in your tent at night all alone in the woods is a new experience for a lot of people and it can definitely be scary but there are a few ways that you can kind of mitigate that and help yourself feel a little bit more comfortable first is to make yourself tired so one way i like to set myself up for success in the sleep department is by waking up really early or hiking a really long day or both it's a lot harder to ruminate on the stick that just snapped outside your tent if you're absolutely exhausted. Second is sleep aids. It's not a bad idea to pack something like melatonin that will help you sleep. Benadryl also does the trick and it's a multi-purpose first aid kit item. If you know you're the kind of person that will think every chipmunk outside your tent is really a bear, consider downloading some podcasts, music, white noise, Netflix that will soothe you or distract you enough to sleep. It can also be helpful to listen to while hiking to keep your mind on something else if you're starting to psych yourself out about being alone. I don't give a shit if it's more pure or whatever to listen to the sounds of nature if the choice is drowning out the anxiety with a good audiobook versus never leaving your house. I'm choosing audiobook every single time. Obviously, if you're listening to these things either while in your tent at night or while hiking, it comes with a little bit of a caveat. You don't want it to be so loud or the noise canceling to be so much that you don't hear anything. You need to be somewhat aware of your surroundings. It's a little more important, I think, while you're hiking, um, but just in general, you wanna make sure you're not drowning out all the noise completely. For example, Josh one time completely flew by a rattlesnake that was hiding in some underbrush because his music was so loud. I came by three minutes later with my music turned down a little bit more, heard it rattling, was able to scope out where it was. I had to literally like move brush aside and look underneath the plants. Um, and it easily could have bit him if he had happened to step on it. So that's just one cautionary tale of why you might want your music to be just a little bit turned down, especially while you're hiking. I personally find it most effective slash safe to have either one headphone out or the volume turned significantly down so I can still hear what's happening around me. At night, again, this is a little less important, but you still need to be aware of your surroundings. Another tip that Corey shared with me on Instagram is to think of your tent as a shield from the world. Visualize it, believe it, lean into it. Your tent is your safe space. And while I didn't really think of this on my own, I think it's something that I inadvertently do. Whenever I finally put my tent up on a solo day, I feel so safe just like inside that little piece of fabric for some reason, it makes a big difference. And just really lean into that and let yourself believe it. Moving on to setting yourself up for success in general, not just while sleeping. First, if you need to, camp with cell service. There's no shame in setting yourself up for a little extra peace of mind on your first solo trip. If hiking and camping somewhere that has cell service is going to make it more likely that you actually go, then do it. Tons of mapping applications have cell service coverage maps that you can use to help you choose a route and campsite that will have cell coverage either most of or all of the way. You can always flip your phone into airplane mode if you change your mind and you prefer to disconnect, but you'll have that peace of mind if you need it. 
Another option could be getting a satellite communicator that has an unlimited texting plan so you can sort of stave off that loneliness at night, but just keep in mind some of the limitations that I outlined earlier. Another viable and helpful option is to go on a shorter hike. If you're feeling overwhelmed about going super far into the backcountry alone, remember that a backpacking trip doesn't necessarily have to entail huge amounts of miles. Try something shorter for your first solo trip to build that confidence or be able to turn around if you feel like you need to. Just give yourself that little safety net if it means you're going to get more comfortable solo backpacking. Next, listen to your body. This is another one from Corey. One of the perks of being solo is that we are completely on our own schedule. You can tune into what your body needs and don't be afraid to take breaks and take in the scenery. If you notice you're stumbling or tripping a lot more than usual, maybe sit down for a snack. Maybe you're not cueing yourself to sit down as much because you're not with other people. So just keep in mind that you really wanna be in tune with how you're feeling. Next, do something before you leave that makes you feel badass. Again from Corey, she said that she always braids her hair in a particular way, which made me realize I have certain outfits that make me feel more badass in the backcountry. Whatever that is for you, lean into it and leverage it. Another great tip is to follow or read about people who backpack solo that inspire you. I got into backpacking primarily by learning about other women who backpack solo. So watching them do it made me feel like I could too. So try to fill the media that you're consuming with badass solo backpackers or people that just plain inspire you. Finally, there are a few mindset shifts that seem very simple, but tend to help me a lot when I'm solo backpacking. First, I've already sort of mentioned this in this video, but it's helpful for me to remind myself that any night walking down a city street or any given day commuting to work is statistically more dangerous than a night in the backcountry. When I got back from the PCT, one of the main questions I got, especially from other women, was whether or not I felt safe out there. And I would always respond with this story of when I was training for the PCT, walking on the Atlanta Beltline with my weighted vest, my friend and I heard gunshots and ended up finding out that there was a shootout at the Taco Bell down the street from where we were walking. That training hike was probably more dangerous than the entire PCT. I realized that might not be helpful for everybody and may just end up causing more anxiety in everyday life, but I truly feel so much more protected, at least from people, when I'm in the woods versus when I'm not. Second, and this helps mostly when I'm trying to convince myself to leave on a solo trip, is reminding myself that it's mostly just hiking. If you're interested in backpacking, you are likely already a good hiker. And at the end of the day, backpacking is just hiking while also sleeping in a tent. So it's not really that big of a shift. And lastly, this message is mostly for the ladies, but just keep in mind that when you tell people you're going solo backpacking, they might question you. They will probably ask you what the hell you're thinking. They might say that you need to carry a gun or ask you if you are carrying a gun. They might inadvertently even try to scare you out of it. Do not let them fearmonger you out of one of the most empowering and liberating experiences you can have. Obviously go prepared, but you watching this video is telling me that you are already putting in the work to make sure that you are. It's okay and it's normal to be scared of solo backpacking, but I think that you should do it anyway. If you're looking for more backpacking tips or inspiration, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. That's what it's focused on. Stay safe and happy hiking.